Today, I'm gonna show you how to digitize your very own business logo. So as you can see, I'm on Canva.com and Canva has thousands and thousands of templates that you can use for just about anything. Anything that you can think of that can come as a template, Canva probably has it. And one of those things are logos. So you can come on here and get inspiration, get ideas on where to, where to take your business logo. Um, but for the sake of this video, we are going to be digitizing this logo right here, Retro Sunny's Eyeglasses Co. So first things first, you're gonna come up here and you're gonna click share, and then you're gonna click download. After you click download, this is your opportunity to choose what file type that you'd like to save this image as. Uh, I personally recommend PNG or SVG. Uh, as you can see, SVG has a crown next to it, meaning that it comes with a pro Canva account. So if you have that option, I definitely recommend SVGs, but if you don't, PNG works just as fine. Okay, so after you download the image, the first thing you wanna do is locate the file that you just saved and bring it into Hatch. Now you're just gonna go over to the left hand corner and press on auto digitize, which is going to open up this whole column right here. And once you click that, you're gonna press click to fill. Then you're gonna go ahead and click on the design itself. I recommend going as low as you can, as long as everything is visible. But now let's go ahead and begin with the digitizing process. So what I like to do, I like to zoom in but you also want to keep in mind working front to back. We're going to start off with the tan color in the back and I'm going to go ahead and click it and it's going to auto digitize for me. And since the black thread of the other letters are a little bit on the thinner side, especially down here, I'm going to go ahead and close all of these holes. So to do that, I click the fill that I want to adjust, which would be the tan one. And then you go up to the top and click reshape, which then uh, makes the notes appear. First things first, let's just go ahead and delete the R. And I'm basically just going to do the same exact thing for every single letter, like all around. Okay, so after you finish that, this is when I like to mess around with the angles. This is the angle line right here. This orange, well, it's purple now, but this orange square all the way to this other orange square is the angle line. This is how you can see um, the way that the stitches are going. Even if you look right here, you can see that it's just following the angle. So if you never notice, like now, now you do, now you know, now you do notice, I guess, maybe. I feel like my goal here most of the time is to make those lines not be so apparent. And it's really just like playing around with the angles. I feel like this is probably the best. It's still a little bit visible, but it's not gonna be as visible as you think, I promise. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in because I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and do the yellow next. But I will say, um, you can adjust the color sequence at the end. So it really doesn't matter what order you go in. I'm just trying to save myself some time, but do as you please. And click, click to fill without holes. So the black right here and right here will be disregarded and it'll just be one big yellow circle of fill. So there we go. And I also forgot to mention this. This is my favorite function in Hatch. This one right here. It is the smooth shapes button. And you guys, this right here is going to remove the excess um, notes that are in your project. I feel like this right here, if, it, if this doesn't explain to you how important node count is, I don't know what will, because they actually have a button that will lower it for you because they know it's important that you, you don't need a gazillion nodes. Because I, I always say how important it is to have as few nodes as possible and they literally have a button that'll do that for you. So anyways, <laughs> um, if you look closely at the yellow fill, that was my little rant, you guys. If you look closely at the yellow fill, um, in just a second, you're gonna see it kind of condense in some areas. And I'm gonna go in and fix it a little bit already because I can see that it needs to be fixed. So I'm basically just gonna overlap 
these two colors. So we're going to start off with the eyeglasses and I'm going to go ahead and smooth the shapes out for that as well. Basically every time I digitize a fill, I go ahead and smooth the shapes out. Um, because you want to know what? I've noticed that if you wait to the end and you could wait to the end and grab the entire design, every fill together and press smooth shapes all at once. But I've also, I've noticed that it doesn't delete as many nodes as it does when you just do it one by one. So I'm also going to make it satin and I also want to change the angle from 90 to probably zero because I feel like that will ex accentuate the lightning bolt just a little bit more. So now let's go to the smiley face. Same thing, smooth the shapes and click it to be satin as well. And let's maybe change that to angle as well. Now we're gonna go on to the letters and I try not to go too crazy with where I go. So let's try and start right here. Okay, so after I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click right over here. I'm gonna click the black thread and I'm gonna go ahead and smooth the shapes out. And I'm gonna change it to satin as well. And after the black thread, I think it's safe to go to the orange now. Okay. And I'm going to go to the top, hit select to grab that orange outline and smooth the shapes as well and change it to satin. And I'm going to go up to the top right here and click reshape. So that way I can reshape the nose just a little bit. I'm going to overlap the orange onto the white thread so there's no gapping. And I just go back a little bit to make sure... I can like really see where that note is going. Hit select, smooth shapes again, and hit satin. And I'm also going to go ahead and outline this orange rim because I can see that there's a little bit of gapage coming through. And I think there was a outline on here, if I remember correctly. So uh, basically to do that, I'm just going to, it's already selected, but to double check that it's selected, just make sure you look for that pink-ish tone of like an outline. It's like kind of highlighted for you. And just click duplicate at the top and then hit outline. And that's going to outline that duplicate. And I'm going to also change the thread color to black and change it to satin. And then I'm going to change the width over here. And that's going to change the width of the outline. And I usually stick around like 50, 50 to 75, maybe 80. It really depends on what is being outlined. But 50 looks good for this, but maybe a little bit smaller for the inside. Okay. And I also see a black outline on this as well. So let's, let's do it. So we're going to do the same thing. Hit duplicate and click outline satin and then change it from 98 <laughs> to maybe 50. And I don't really want the one on the inside. I feel like I really just want it on the outside. And that's also gonna be black as well. Once I finish digitizing, this is when I go ahead and click zoom to fit, which is going to display the whole design. And it just kind of zooms you out a little bit. And now I go up here to preview to see what it's looking like. This is also where you can go to see what the stitch count is as well. A lot of people always ask me where you can see the stitch count. You can see the stitch count on the preview button in Hatch, and you can also see the stitch count on your machine, I believe, prior to stitching it out. So, yeah, to answer that question. 
So after that, I go ahead and click the image that I was digitizing with just to hit delete. And this is the moment when I can really zoom in and take a look at the thread and see if there's any gaps that I can see just from the just from deleting the background, because sometimes that background can fill in the gaps and therefore make it seem like there's no gaps. And I'm just kind of dragging the design. I clicked pan, by the way, I clicked pan. That's how I'm dragging it. My rule of thumb is to have it right in the middle because that way it'll be less of a chance of gapage. That's what I do. Try it out. Let me know if it works for you. I've, um, ever since I've been doing that, I don't get nearly as much of gapping issues as I've had in the past. And this little bit of like extra overlap is going to overcompensate for that potential pulling. So I go ahead and make a nice little box over the design to grab every single component. And I go right up here and this will double check. This is where I double check to see what the height is and what the width is and just make sure that it'll fit in my hoop. So as you can see, it is going just over the perimeter that it needs to be in. So this is when I would go in, adjust the size for my hoop, just like that. So now after that, you can come over to the left and hit output design. After that, you're gonna hit export design. And this is also where you can go to change the format of your file. So I have a brother PE 550D machine, which takes PES files. And then you're gonna hit save. And just like that, the name changes and that's what signifies that it has downloaded to your laptop. After you export your design, all you have to do is trans transfer it onto a flash drive and bring that flash drive to your embroidery machine and you're good to go. But that is pretty much all you have to do to digitize your very own business logo. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video by liking, commenting, and possibly subscribing and be on the lookout for more upcoming videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. So the dilemma, <laughs> I can't talk. Um, it, the outcome is not as neat and how do I say this? Cover up the letters. That's, that's the one thing. And then two, um, even if you don't cover up the letters, okay, we're just gonna skip over that because I don't even know how else to explain it. I can't. Okay, you guys, let me just act like I'm just digitizing by myself. Obviously it's not, but it's just this, uh, we're gonna skip that. Delete that part, Taylor, when you're editing. Oh, wow, I've, I never noticed that it tells you the total bobbin, but thank you. Okay, so, so, <laughs> I can't take this seriously. Also, it tells you the color sequence. 